Hello everyone. So I'm going to keep this quite brief because uh, as you can tell my voice is a little bit messed up from being sick. Um, but KTT v1.05 is currently in public beta, which means you can download it through the um, product page on Gumroad, uh, which you can access either from your Gumroad account or um, from the receipt that you got when you purchased KTT. And this is a pretty big update because it brings support to macOS devices um, that is full, full support. So ideally every feature that is available on Windows and Linux will work fine on Mac. Uh, and this is still in beta because I don't want to promise a full stability right off the bat. Um, there might still be bugs, but um, as far as I can tell, uh, we haven't encountered any major bugs over the past few days. Uh, I've been working with beta testers on the KTT Discord, also link in the description below, uh, to iron out all the kinks. And we think we got into a pretty stable state. Um, and I want to briefly um, thank Stefan Hasselwimmer for making the, um, co the conversion to macOS possible. Um, he did a lot of work uh, to identify which bits of code were problematic um, and needed to be changed, and he, he sent that to me uh, and gave me clear advice on, on what I could do to make this macOS compatible, and um, this would not have been possible without him. Um, he also did a ton of testing and, and R&D and stuff, uh, so yeah. Um, if you're using or if you're planning to get this for a Mac, uh, he's the guy to thank. Um, and in uh, v1.05, I'll put him in uh, an attributions uh, folder in, in the handbook, uh, which you can check out. Um, I currently don't have that, but that will be there very soon. Um, anyways, uh, I want to talk about some of the uh, new features for everyone, um, not just the uh, conversion to, to Mac OS or the, the port to Mac OS, um, because there are some really new, really exciting new ones. Um, the most exciting of which is, uh, the new features added to the smooth tail listener. Um, you can see on this, uh, terrain when I zoom in, uh, that the slopes have some really intricate detailing here. I'll show the, um, path trace light map here. Um, or just like this, this sort of clay version of this. And you can see how like they're really nice. These rocks are like really nicely integrated and they have like this really interesting crumbly look to them, which I, I, I find quite appealing. Um, and just generally speaking, um, uh, they look a lot better than like, uh, they would previously with just like some erosion and then like displacement and stuff. Um, and this is all done procedurally. There's no, um, textures like anywhere. Um, so I want to show you kind of a bit about that. So this is the, um, this is just the erosion, uh, for this. Uh, and then, um, a couple of notes later, you'll see the smooth tailless and this node, um, pretty much takes care of everything. Um, and that's due to this new folder called the deviation. Um, and basically what it means is that it will alter how the, um, solver that the smooth tailless node, uh, uses, it'll alter how that sort of interprets the slope of the terrain. And, uh, it can be a little bit, um, unpredictable to use. It, it takes a little bit of intuition. Um, but basically it takes like this input to your mask, um, which you can see I've created this, uh, sort of, um, terraced like stratified look to it um which is also created by this new strata strata noise node this one isn't super interesting it's kind of intuitive what it does just um as these sort of uh terraces to the tree um and i'm adding some uh, noise to the mask there and that's being fed into this deviation map parameter and this deviation map turns it from the very basic uh, soon tail this effect that you'd, uh, see before. Let me just pull up, uh, another one. Tailless. So I'm just going to feed this one into here. 
I'm just going to turn this down. Um, match some of the parameters here. And just give it a second to uh, compute. Yeah. So this is what the Simultaneous uh, node originally did. Uh, you can see it's like a massive improvement. Um, and that's entirely due to the deviation stuff. Um, but there's also a couple new um, parameters. Uh, uh, the granularity and the random. Um, so basically the granularity will add kind of these little like pebbles to the terrain to kind of break it up, uh, break up the effect of the, like break up the smoothness. So this could be quite handy. Um, you can control the amount of them. Uh, and uh, the uh, random that'll do, I'm going to create actually a new height field here. Height field. And then a um, mountain. And then a uh, tailus. And let's just give it a little bit more detail. So the granularity amount uh, we've already talked about, it adds this sort of effect to the um, terrain. This random amount though, um, it provides more uniform sort of breakup. So it won't um, create like those little like pebbles and the streaks coming off of them. It'll just kind of augment the uh, look of the um, random or yeah, I'll just provide a little bit of break up there. Um, and uh, I'm going to briefly demo the um, deviation map here. Um, I'm going to use a um, mask of Norians to do so. Oops. So if I plug that in there, it's actually, let's move this to a more even value just so that, um, well, just because I want to. <laughs> So if I use deviation here, we're going to see that this immediately um, creates some interesting bits. Um, I, I mentioned before how it kind of reinterprets uh, how the um, terrain should, or re, it changes how the slope interprets, or the solver interprets the um, slope of the terrain. Um, basically what that means is that it thinks by adding this deviation map, it makes the solver in the smooth tailless node think that this bit is a lot uh, shallower than it is, um, which is a very simplified explanation. But it allows you to get really precise looking cliffs and stuff, but still the effect um, around it, the integration, is uh, very cool to, very cool to see. Um, and you can still add like the um, granularity amount and the random uh, and then you can change the amount of this deviation generally the biggest like large scale effects happen around a deviation amount of one um, but uh, after that you'll get kind of a little bit more like crumbly shapes which can be really interesting if you have like a rocky terrain and such um, you can see what happens when I like change the roughness of this noise texture down. If I change it up, if I change it up, it becomes like a lot more crumbly. If I change it down, um, you're seeing a lot like bigger shapes and stuff uh, represented. Uh, it can be a little bit unintuitive to work with, but generally speaking, um, features that are on the mask, they get kind of integrated um, into this deviation map. Um, and it also uh, scales up very, very well. So uh, if you go like change the resolution to be a bit higher, uh, you can see like it's preserving the sharpness and the uh, um, sort of look of those details uh, quite, quite strong. So this is that 8K. Uh, and you can see these bits look like super nice and crumbly. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, I'm going to go back to 2K right here. Um, but this is why I also made these strata noise, um, because I needed to have something 
Well, I, I figured it would be really interesting to see what you could do if you could like sort of add terracing to this. So the strata noise is my um, solution to, to that. And um, if I turn this, this off, uh, you can see how that creates like this terraced effect. And it's very different from using the, um, like the terraced node and such. Um, because it kind of creates like these bands of rocky material and then this the smooth stuff that follows afterwards. Um, you can you can play around with this. And then I also like to do I also added this cross stratification thing, which essentially allows you to create multiple different layers of strata. Um and uh sort of have them going off in different directions. So this can be a really cool effect too. Right, uh, and that's what I was doing with this uh, over here. Then we add the um, mask noise back in. Um, it's uh, it's definitely quite interesting. Uh, you get some really interesting like rocky, or you yeah you just get interesting slope detail. Um, and I before I leave, I'd like to um, credit my friend uh, Nuache for discovering this technique and giving me permission to integrate it into KTT. He's done some lovely work with um, World Machine and he has a uh, fantastic macro pack uh, that you can get. I'll, I'll provide links to his stuff in the description below. Um, he does great work, one of the most talented terrain people I know. Uh, and this technique of his is um, a very, solid addition to uh ktt and um yeah he deserves uh some recognition for that so uh i think i've been yapping long enough <laughs> my voice doesn't like me too much right now uh so i'm gonna sign off um thank you guys very much for watching uh, i hope that if you uh have a um Apple device and have been interested in this for a little while, uh, that this will be uh, good news for you. Um, and definitely, uh, of course, right now I'm uh, looking for any feedback I have from Apple users, if there are any um, lingering bugs. Again, I think it's pretty stable. I think we've worked through most of them, but uh, can never be too sure, right? So um, if you have anything uh, to report over there, um, either put it in the Discord uh, which again you can find in the description or uh, shoot me an email and uh, I'll look into it. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Bye.